keep our economy on track so we can continue to fund and increase funding for our health care system. The choice Mr. Ignatieff puts before you and the other parties, that you somehow have to choose between the military and health care, you somehow have to choose uh, raising taxes if you want to keep benefits, it's a false choice. The Liberal Party, when it was in office, raised taxes. And they cut health care, and they cut education, and they cut pensions, and they cut all these things because when they raise taxes, they hurt economic growth and they hurt the economy. That is a false choice. We're all moving forward together. We need a low tax future where we can continue to fund and increase funding for our health care system. That's what we're doing. That's what we're succeeding at. And that's the path we've got to stay on. Jack Layton. The problem with both Mr. Harper's party and Mr. Ignatieff's party is that they don't propose to do anything now. They're talking about their platforms. You'll see what I'm talking about. There's no investments right now in getting the significant increase in family doctors and, and nurses that we need today. There's five million Canadians who don't have family medicine. Uh, we, we, we're not getting the investments in home care and long-term care that are needed today. And we're not seeing proposals on how we can actually implement, including with some funding, the uh, program to begin to get our pharmaceutical prices down. Michael and Ignat that's what the NDP is offering. Mr. Gnatty, then Mr. Dusek. That's just completely false. We're the only party in this election with a specific proposal on family care so that you can take time off for work to look after a loved one at home so you can get some reimbursement of your expenses providing health care in the home. That's a key dynamic in the future that we've got to invest in and strengthen. The other thing we need to be saying to Canadians, the other thing we need to be saying to Canadians is we need more health, not necessarily more health care health prevention, health education. We're the only party with a national food policy to put more Canadian food on Canadian plates and get the salt, fat, and sugar down. That's how you, that's how you get uh, better value for your health care dollar. That's how we improve the health of Canadians. That ought to be the goal. That's in our platform. That's the kind of commitment well, we're prepared promise. to make. It's a promise you're making. Uh, unfortunately, uh, your party has a rather long history of making but, promises in elections and breaking them Jack, after. Jack, at least but, we get into government. You'll be in opposition well, forever. There's that sense of but entitlement Dan, once again. Same old, uh, same old uh, attitude from the Liberal Party. Mr. Uh, Duceppe. But the, the problem is, uh, I think there's too much money in Ottawa. In Ottawa is collecting too much money for the, uh, the jurisdiction of its own. Is a provincial jurisdiction and the expertise is there. Not in Ottawa, you're not managing a single hospital in Ottawa. That means if we start negotiating what is, who's going to do what, it'll be a fight between bureaucrats instead of giving the money to those who need the money to make sure the services will be given to those who need those services. So we need a, a new fiscality to make sure the money goes where it should go, not here, and then imposing decisions with no expertise at all on the province, provinces and on Quebec. Uh, I, I've tried to stay out of this thing all night long because you gentlemen have been doing a, a fine job keeping it going, but I, I did get a lot of emails, I must say, from people, but I, I did get a lot of emails, I must say, from people saying, please ask them this, you're all promising to continue health funding at 6% a year in a world where our growth rates are about 2% and change, and while you're all promising to keep taxes reasonably low, and you're all promising to erase deficits that are very, very high. Can any of you really do this? One, two, three, let's hear from you all, please. Yes, absolutely, you make it your highest priority. That's what we've done. We've said right from the beginning, we've laid out the fiscal plan, it's, it's the uh, International Monetary Fund and others says very credible, and we've been clear. We're not gonna cut the rate of increase in transfers for healthcare, education, and pensions. That is job number one. That's why it's gonna take us three or four years to balance the budget, but we're gonna make sure that we maintain and continue to fund those programs because we need to fund those programs because that's ultimately what Canadians think it's all about, keeping the economy strong so we can continue to deliver these kinds of services. Mr. For Layton. It's gonna be about making choices. Mr. Harper's trying to tell us tonight that one can have absolutely everything huge tax cuts and huge expenditures on jets and uh, continued increase in health spending. Uh, this isn't the old Stephen Harper talking. This is, this is the, uh, the one who's now been affected by the Ottawa culture, I have to say. But it does mean making some choices and some things we will not be able to do if we're going to fund our health care. And we've set out some of those things that should not be done. Uh, Mr. Harper's budget includes, a, a, a platform includes an $11 billion hole, things he says he's going to not spend money on, but he won't tell us what they are. 
Will they be food inspectors? Will they be in the military? Uh, you know, who, who are these people going to be to make choices? And Canadians are going to have a chance to do that on May 2nd. Mr. Gnadiev. Straight question deserves a straight answer. You peg the corporate tax rate at 18 percent. You save six billion dollars. You put those jets out to competitive tender. You save more billions. You stop building those mega prisons. You save still more billions. That allows you to invest six percent to improve Canadian health care. That's how you. This is choice time. Mr. Harper is offering you, offering you fantasy economics. He cannot explain how he's going to sustain Canadian health care. We can. Mr. Duceppe. I'll give you two examples. It's about choices. Obviously, it's about choices. We should stop uh, giving the oil companies fiscal advantages, $3 billion. And we should also stop letting money, $3 billion, going into tax haven. We even signed a, a, a treaty with Panama, a tax haven. I mean, $3 billion a year plus those $3 billion to the oil companies, that makes all in all $6 billion. Just those two examples. Mr. Harper? Well, uh, let me just say this. Um, our philosophy is pretty clear. Uh, you fund services like health care by making sure you keep your economy growing and creating jobs. You don't do that by raising taxes. The other parties are all proposing that they can fund all of these new promises, $30 billion, $60 billion, by increasing tax rates, increasing tax rates on job creators. You know. Experts say that's going to cost us 200,000 jobs and $40 billion in the investment. Is. You grow the economy and you okay. grow your tax base Jack Layton by creating and economic growth. Speak that's what Jack we're Layton. Speak the truth, Mr. Harper. We're actually proposing, instead of giving tax breaks